Misha. Welcome. Um, it's really nice to meet you in person here in this exhibition, Contest, Contested Landscape, which is part of the Biennale for Actuele Photography that I have curated and I invited you to uh, show this project, Secret Sariaku. And um, it's we have been talking about it on the on the phone, on Zoom calls, of course, and I have uh, seen the book. Uh, but it's actually the first time that I see it exhibited. Mm -hmm. um, Although I've seen installation shots from a wonderful show you did in Ecuador, uh, in your home country. And um, well, during this next uh, uh, talk, uh, I would like to know a bit more, of course, about the project and how you have presented it. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions and uh, well, feel free to okay. answer them uh, the way you like. Okay. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm always curious, um, uh, like artists as you, you know, what was this first uh, moment that you thought I have to go to this place mm -hmm. and then also describe this place where you went? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the first time I, I heard uh, the word Sarayaku was in the news in Ecuador. So it was in 2012 when they won a, a case, uh, a lawsuit against the state of Ecuador at the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. And it was because the state entered in their territory with militaries, uh, with the military, uh, in order to explore for, for oil. And mm -hmm. they did so without the consent or with, without informing the people that live in this territory, mm -hmm. in this case, Arayaku. And so in the Ecuadorian constitution, there is one part that the, the people that live in one territory, they have to be informed and give consent to any extraction of natural resources. And this was not the case. So this case was like 10 years. So it lasted from 2002 until 2012. And in 2012, they won. And it was the first time that an indigenous population won such a big case in Latin America. So mm -hmm. it was quite big in the country. So then I was like uh, really, really interested in getting to know them better. Mm -hmm. Just I wanted to understand from an activist perspective, how are they organized? Mm -hmm. How did they manage to beat a, a country, to beat a state? Yeah. And yeah, and this was in 2012. I was not living in Ecuador at that time, but I, I went back in 2014 or 15. Mm -hmm. And then I started to, to, to research about it. And there was a nice opportunity from the, from the Association Humboldt, from the Goethe Institute in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. uh, they invited me to take part in a project that had to do with also environmental causes. Mm -hmm. And I proposed to start this project in Sarayaco. So, I, so they gave me the OK. And then I started to make the contacts to get in. Mm -hmm. This was really funny because uh, I didn't know where to start. So of course there are no telephones in the in the middle of the jungle. And uh, I started to ask people around, some friends that been that had, that had been there as journalists, and they gave me a couple of contacts. And nobody was replying to my emails. So I was like, okay, of course, uh, who will reply an email from yeah from, from a, a random photographer. guy? Yeah, from a from, photographer. But from an activist. Yeah, 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 yeah from an activist. <laughs> and then uh, I reached to a guy that was working at the communications department in Sarayaku via Facebook. So mm -hmm. I just sent him a message and then he replied five minutes uh, later and he said, yes, of course, you have to send us a letter, an intention letter okay. uh, stating who you are, uh, who is financing you and uh, what do you want from us and also what are you going to give us back? Mm -hmm. And this was really interesting when he said me this, what are you going to give us back? Yeah. He meant not in terms of economical uh, finances or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. but of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And this was quite a touching moment for me because uh, he said uh, he explained it this way uh, you uh, always from the west from the civilized mm -hmm. world come to indigenous territories or to the jungle and extract knowledge be it in the form of medicinal plants or as anthropologists or mm -hmm. as bi biologists mm -hmm. then you go back to your territory and you gain from this knowledge mm -hmm. so you either make uh, medicines that later you will sell to us you patent them and so on and so forth so we are a bit tired of this of course and we also want some uh, knowledge in exchange yeah. and that's also why they make made up the system like that you officially have to register mm -hmm. i mean yeah. You couldn't go 
just go there, just travel there. You really had yeah. to have the leads first, and yeah. then they also ask you these questions right away. Mm -hmm. But that, of course, um, um, uh, is, is absolutely something that was interesting for you because you called yourself already an activist in yeah. your introduction. Yeah. So yes. did that then match for you? Or what uh, no, you I wasn't that? expecting that. Okay. I was not expecting, uh, to tell you the truth, I was not expecting them to be as organized as they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the Sarayaku government is, is, is a dog government. They have a president, a vice president, okay. uh, uh, the Curacas, which are like a council of, of elders, yeah. and uh, the community communications department and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. So they were quite uh, bureaucratic even for me. I was not expecting that. So mm -hmm. I had to write a proper letter with the backing mm -hmm. of the uh, Goethe Institute Association Humboldt yeah. and uh, explaining who I was, what, that I was not a spy from, mm -hmm. for the oil company or something like that. And after that, uh, one week later, something like that, they replied. They said, yes, mm -hmm. of course, you can come. You have to give us something back, of course. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we just arranged this, uh, this um, uh, logistical yeah. detail because uh, Sarayaku is quite far away from the nearest city. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about uh, by plane, you can reach it ha by half an hour flight, but it's quite expensive and it's a bit dangerous because some planes have crashed in that area. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and by boat, you can reach it in about four to six hours, like okay. boat, boat, boat ride. And how area. did you go the first, uh, the first time? time? I went by boat. And okay. Yeah, I only went two times by by plane. I was mm -hmm. really scared, so I would never do that again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because these are small planes, they fly below the uh. the, the, the clouds. Yeah. And the, the climate in the Amazon changes really, really quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so course, if yeah. it starts to rain, then it's really bad news for the plane. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> so you went by boat. So then, yeah. I, then I can also imagine that was quite a slow journey yeah. because four to six hours mm -hmm. on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, and were you then thinking already about that question? Okay, what am I going to give back? Yes, yeah, of course. I, I told them that my knowledge, my field of knowledge is uh, photography, is video, is art and we can do something like that and the first day when i arrived there i met jose miguel who was uh, this guy working at the communications mm -hmm. department and he said yeah listen we are we're doing uh, a catalog on local medicinal plants mm -hmm. uh, would you mind uh, doing the photos of these plants mm -hmm. for us uh, for this catalog mm -hmm. like, for sure, of course yeah. for sure so i just went like one day just photographing mm -hmm. uh, these plants and it was really interesting because they were explaining me what does this plant do what does mm -hmm. it cure for mm -hmm. and so on and so forth so yeah that was like the first time that was the first thing that i somehow yeah. gave back but then since i was visiting them over and over again mm -hmm. i don't remember how many times already we organized workshops or mm -hmm. uh, workshops in photography for children because uh, like they have become the community has become cyber activists mm -hmm. and they installed internet in their community mm -hmm. so now almost every young guy or your guy, young girl have a cell phone a mm -hmm. smartphone mm -hmm. and of course they have cameras in them and they use i don't know facebook twitter instagram mm -hmm. tiktok everything and it was interesting to do this workshop in you know, photography mm -hmm. and then later together with the communications department we made a, a instagram account for only for sarayaku yeah. which is called everyday sarayaku and uh, the the aim was give them a little bit of knowledge in basics of photography composition mm -hmm. light mm -hmm. Uh, in order them to to be able to fill this account with uh, other kinds of pictures yeah, yeah, of their yeah. reality. So this was like almost uh, after I finished this project, uh, after I felt I finished this yeah. project, <laughs> because I, I don't know if it's finished yet. <laughs> That's another question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's for later. <laughs> yeah. uh, we decided, okay, let's, I, uh, let's do this like you have you live there it's more honest if you document your yeah. your own life yeah. if you yeah. tell what you want to tell and then uh, yeah. uh, that's up yeah. to you yeah. and uh, maybe just to go uh, to this installation because mm -hmm. um, um, uh, 
we can see that behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain a little bit? Because it's with Polaroids. It's a workshop with children that yeah. you did. Yeah. Yeah. So I had this idea. The first time I, I arrived there, mm -hmm. I was talking, of course, to everybody, and then I talked to children. Mm -hmm. And uh, straight away, I was I was I was really amazed that they knew what they were defending mm -hmm. they knew that nature is important they knew that this is their 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 home they mm -hmm. knew that if something if about the balance in the rainforest is somehow damaged it will trigger a chain reaction yeah. and it will damage everything else so and it was really interesting to me that this was really small ki yeah, kids. Yeah, uh, because that is what you are describing is the idea, the concept of the living forest, yeah. as they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, this is the philosophy, their cosmo, cosmo, like the, their worldview, mm -hmm. that uh, everything in, this for, in the forest is alive, mm -hmm. has a spirit, and is interconnected to each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. And so the forest uh, works almost like one being. It's not mm -hmm. like, uh, like several beings; it's just one being. Mm -hmm. So if in this being one element is is uh, damaged, yeah, then it will make a chain reaction and it will damage everything else. Yeah, yeah. other creatures and other living organisms mm -hmm. and and so on, and yeah. then also damage the people that live damage in it. People, you know, yeah, so, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they also was... belong in that. Uh, chain reaction, then, yeah, as yeah, you yeah. call it. So they're yeah. part of the living forest. Yes, yeah. and it was really, really beautiful to hear this, and mm -hmm. also that the children already knew this, and they, mm -hmm. they, they had this knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I came back home, and then I, I was going the second time, mm -hmm. I said, okay, how can I get involved the children in this project? Because for me, it was really, really wise what they were telling me. And I, I decided that perhaps we can do a, a collaborative work uh, in, in the terms that uh, I will bring this Polaroid camera, mm -hmm. instant pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, we will decide where to make a portrait of them. And then I will decide, I will tell them, okay, now can you please interpret your environment for me? Yeah. And yeah. just give them markers mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. just go crazy, whatever you yeah. want to do. And do. that's what they did. And that's what they did. Beautiful installation indeed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's someone looking over my shoulder here. <laughs> yeah. um, because I want to go briefly to the, uh, the other portraits and pictures that you made uh, for this uh, exhibition, for this project. Can you tell a little bit about uh, this portrait yeah. behind me? Yeah, that's, por that's a portrait of Otoniel Walinga. Uh, it was made in 2017 during a celebration called Uyan Sarraimi, which in, uh, translated to English means uh, the, cele the celebration of hunting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a festival which go, the men go deep inside the rainforest, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. deeper than Sarayaku. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, first they are split in four teams. Mm -hmm. Each team has a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a really honor to be elected a leader of okay. a team so in, within the community. And then uh, each, each team goes to different parts of Sarayaku, mm -hmm. of this really huge land, and they will hunt there for about 15 days. Okay. So they will wow. hunt for the whole community. For uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And men are allowed to go since they are nine, nine years old. So quite That's young. A young age. Yeah, yeah. A young, yeah. Young age. yeah. And then, so the men will go there and will fish and hunt for the community. Mm -hmm. And this is really, really, it's, it's really striking uh, because this festival used to take place every year, once mm -hmm. every, every year. But since they already have seen the impact that the human being is having on the on the all of the mm -hmm. all of their uh, other species there, mm -hmm. they decided to do it every three years. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that so they we're do it. already adapting to the situation, adapting yeah. to the environment. Yeah. Yes, because they yeah. see that uh, uh, there are less animals; they mm -hmm. cannot reproduce, and as they did before, yeah. because yeah. there is less animals. And of course, Sarayaku has a, a big territory of 135,000 hectares, mm -hmm. which is quite big, but there are other territories as well, and mm -hmm. they cannot control what's happening. Like no, of up course river. not. No, and, no. Yeah, the and neighboring sometimes, territories. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. in up, up river you have like an oil extraction facility, mm -hmm. and it makes a lot of noise, and the animals flee, yeah. and then they, yeah. they don't. And they, you cannot see yeah. them in Sarayaku. Yeah, in that sense, it also it's like okay this is what they can do to mm -hmm. defend their territory yeah. 
but I can't influence everything. On the other hand, if I look at the portrait of this wonderful lady here in front of me, yeah. uh, it's clear that she's using mobile devices. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, like you already told me about the Instagram account, yeah. um, because this, this community also tries to, to, to spread their message mm -hmm. via, you know, you already called them cyber activists. Yeah. So also try to get other people involved to take care of their immediate surroundings, because there's at least some point where one can start. Mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit more yeah, about that? So this part was uh, also again really important for, for me mm -hmm. because uh, it was complementary. Uh, they have this ancestral philosophy that everything mm -hmm. is interconnected within mm -hmm. the, their world and mm -hmm. the jungle. And then they are using the most contemporary means of communications, yeah. Like yeah. Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. TikTok to spread this message yeah. of, of, yeah. Of, com of interconnectedness. And yeah. So this was like really, really interesting for me, this mix of, of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to, to a friend of mine, Heriberto Walinga there, and he's a movie maker uh, mm -hmm. from Sarayaku. And he was telling me, uh, so we do this, we, we are cyber activists, not because out of vanity, we don't want to mm -hmm. get known in the whole mm -hmm. world because mm -hmm we want to be famous it's not like that we want to get known because when you are known it is harder for the government or for the oil company yeah. to disappear you yeah so this for, was for me yeah. okay wow yeah, it's a powerful thing it's a yeah. true thing and uh, of course they are they are they are doing what they are saying yeah so they have internet there they have uh, electricity mm -hmm. uh, at least partly partially and uh, they they communicate to the outside world so it's less about um yeah, and maybe that's that's uh, it has two it has two consequences doing this. First is then indeed like um, being known, being present indeed, because then then it's harder to to erase a community, let's mm -hmm. say, and to uh, use a landscape for 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 the gain of of um, well only small people on this earth. Um, mm -hmm. And and the other thing is then that they. Um, yeah, do they actually have an influence on other communities that you know of? I mean, mm -hmm. is there a kind of network <laughs> also worldwide? Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think they have. Uh, especially in Ecuador, there are other communities mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. seen what Sarayaku has achieved yeah. via this activism. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, yeah, some communities already installed internet also mm -hmm. in their communities. Mm -hmm. and so I they find, set an example yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also, there is an interesting thing in, in Ecuador. The indigenous uh, there is a big indigenous movement of women, mm -hmm. indi women indigenous yeah. movement. And uh, many of the leaders, they are Quechua also, they come from the rainforest. Mm -hmm. And one of the leaders is Pat Patricia Walinga, which is from mm -hmm. Sarayaku. So there is, of course, yeah. this, this knowledge exchange. And also they have been invited to, to give talks and to speak about, they even were present at the COP20, I don't remember, the one in Scotland yeah. last, mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they were there, they were yeah. in Paris, yeah. uh, speaking this climate issues yeah. thing. So they understand that uh, communication is really, really important yeah and without communications uh, they cannot survive yeah so. and then you because you you already positioned yourself as an as an activist and you also said that you had to bring something back to mm -hmm. them you know that that was the the agreement that you made so what is the feeling now after well maybe then not finishing the project mm -hmm. yet but what do you what have you brought what did you bring so uh, yeah when i was thinking about how can and I spread, help, help them spread the mm -hmm, word mm -hmm. because, of course, they have a big uh, auditorium, they have a big followers, mm -hmm. uh, and I have others that are not necessarily, do not necessarily mm -hmm. know each other. So, uh, there was this idea that uh, we were speaking with Jose Miguel again with uh, the communications department mm -hmm. guy. And he and I, I proposed, okay, so you are already doing this internet activism, mm -hmm. cyber activism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I would love to do something not not similar, but something that will complement this mm -hmm. this activism. So one of the quote unquote products of this project is the secretsrayaku.net mm -hmm. uh, website, which is an interactive documentary. Yeah. It has six chapters. It's quite different than this. It's educational and, and journalistic. It, there's quite a lot of statistics, text, mm -hmm. text written by the communities uh, by, by the community of Sarayaku and text written by journalists and taken from academia. So it was like a mix on, yeah. of knowledge to get to know them a little bit better. And uh, in this way, and of course, like links to their own pages, to mm -hmm. the Facebook, to Instagram, so that everything will yeah, be connected. connected. <laughs> Again, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, th that was one of the like one of the main parts of yeah. the project. And then, of course, uh, yeah, the exhibitions mm -hmm. and then the, the book mm -hmm. uh, that have totally different uh, public, a totally different yeah. auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and in, in this way, I think it more or less complements each other. Mm -hmm. uh, each part of the project can work separately as well as in, in conjunction. Yeah. So there are pictures <laughs> in the don't worry. <laughs> so there are pictures in the book that mm -hmm. are not in the exhibition or in the web and vice versa. Yeah. And there are some elements that are not present in, in other parts. Uh, and they tell more or less the same story, but in a different way. And it was also in, uh, uh, I know I started as an activist, mm -hmm. but then like in, during uh -huh. these five or six years, mm -hmm. I have been doing this project, the focus shifted mm -hmm. and it shifted more to a philosophical way of seeing things about this interconnectedness mm -hmm. of forest elements about uh, how can you see that what cannot be seen because they yeah. have they have their own deities they believe there are some beings called such runakuna or the beings from the forest mm -hmm. uh, that help them to take care of their environment and this is why i also started to mix not only documentary photography mm -hmm. but other kinds of photography that is more subjective yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that's what i really like about the exhibition mm -hmm. indeed that there's a kind of atmosphere here mm -hmm. yeah. that's you know and and we also talked about, you know, should there be captions, you know, should people know where they look at, but it's also, you know, up to your imagination more mm -hmm. and getting little hints uh, about this story. Mm -hmm. um, so you just uh, said that um, you might not be finished. So <laughs> what what is then that you that you are still looking for or hoping for or? Yeah. So the the, the thing is that I have always. So this project taught me a lot mm -hmm. uh, while visiting the community and also while working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on my own. And one of my thoughts is that uh, we as storytellers or as photographers sometimes think that we finish something mm -hmm. and then publish a book, do an exhibition mm -hmm. and then that's it. And, and, and go, go to the next. And go to the next. Mm -hmm. But for me, this is, especially with this project, there is this stage that I am spreading the word. Yeah. I am, mm -hmm. yeah, with, again, with this activism, with their example, mm -hmm. uh, I take every opportunity I have to make a talk, to mm -hmm. talk to people about the work, to talk to people about Sarayaku. Uh, and this spreading the word, the word uh, has not finished. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, in that sense, I will you keep will on. continue. Yeah. 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 And, and then who knows this, also, like, depending on how things evolve, you feel at a certain moment that you have to go back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you never yeah. know. I could, I could do that. Yeah. And I, I know that uh, in order for this to more or less be finished as mm -hmm. I want, I want, I have to uh, spread the word as, as much as possible, yeah. and yeah, not just sure. okay. I did this nice exhibition, then I mm -hmm. go home and like, no, I cannot do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where has the uh, project been shown in Ecuador? I know yeah. about that. Yes, it was shown in Ecuador mm -hmm. in. Uh, in Quito and Cuenca, these two cities, mm -hmm. and uh, also online together with other projects with mm -hmm. the Goethe Institute. And, mm -hmm. uh, and there is an exhibition called uh, online exhibition, Take Me to the River. Mm -hmm. And the video part of this project mm -hmm. is being shown there. And uh, it, then it's going to be shown in, in Australia in mm -hmm. at Photo 22, this okay. uh, festival in Melbourne mm -hmm. in May, I think it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and in Italy also in summer, okay. during the summer, okay. so I'm still Wonderful. trying to... Yeah, yeah, trying yeah. To this is not the last stop of no, the exhibition. No, it won't be, yeah, hopefully no. not. <laughs> Very good, yeah. yeah. 
I think that's actually a very nice um, uh, moment to close then our, our mm -hmm. talk nice. because the story continues, you yeah. will continue mm -hmm. with the project, maybe no new uh, photographs, but you will keep on uh, spreading the word yeah. of this uh, very special uh, community that I only got to know via you. So <laughs> thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah.